When I came to the conclusion that the 700 gallon would look absolutely phenomenal with a school of piranha and a school of tetras, I had to make that move. I was sold on it. I couldn't think of any other direction I wanted to go with it. It was just so inspiring and I thought it would uh, turn out to be absolutely amazing. Turns out it did. With their tank empty though, I decided I'm going to rescape it and put the fish that were essentially in a holding tank into it. And in doing so, we created a beautiful South American tank. However, that left this aquarium bare. That was a few weeks ago I went to the store and I seen a bunch of cool fish and you know, I'm just browsing around, looking around, but I did come across this one tank. And I seen it from a distance and all it said was, all I could see was not for sale. We all want what we can't have, so of course I had to go and see what it was, and it turns out it was a pair of discus. And I thought, oh, that's awesome, but I also thought, no, you know what? We raised discus for years. I spent 10 years with them, and you know, I don't want to do a breeding tank, and then a grow-out tank, and then an even bigger grow-out tank, and you know, I don't want to go through those motions of like professionally breeding discus. But then I thought, you know what I've never done before? Kept discus with the intent to breed them in a naturally set up aquarium. And if I were to ever do that, how would I go about it? Obviously, I kind of want to start off with the sand. In a natural tank, a lot of times we do want to see a sand. I went with a very fine brown sand for a couple of reasons. The color was important there. And when you are getting into discus, a lot of the times, the color of your scape highly affects the coloration of the discus. Fine sand for a very simple reason. I'm not doing bare bottom. This isn't going to be like a sterile discus breeding tank like I've shown you many times uh, how to do in the past. And the biggest reason for doing that is it's so easy to remove uneaten food, fish waste, detritus, anything like that that's just polluting the tank. When it comes to substrates, the finer the substrate, the more likely that all of that's just going to simply settle on top and you can easily remove it with a gravel vacuum. The other pro to using a fine sand with discus is these guys are still a cichlid. They are still going to dig, but they have the mouth similar to like an angelfish, a very tiny mouth that if they want to dig and uh, display natural behaviors, it's going to be much more difficult for them to do so with a more coarse gravel. So fine sand was used here and it turns out it's the sand that was already in here and it's already saturated with nitrifying bacteria. So bonus there. Now it comes to rocks. Now discus are an adhesive egg layer. They're going to lay eggs to a surface. But here's the kicker. You could put in a rock and hope that they will lay on it, but they're probably going to lay it on your filter intake or your heater or the glass itself. A lot of the times it doesn't matter where you, <laughs> where you think they're gonna lay it, they're gonna lay it wherever they want. So what I've decided to do is take a couple of stone piles and give them two distinct options with the ability to swim behind and hide behind and find refuge as well. With that said, we are using uh, almost like river stones that are smooth and that will be ideal for them to even want to lay eggs. Ensuring that they're also inert. Now I've made a video in the past showing you how to do the chemical reactions with rocks that you might find out in the wild or in your backyard. And if you wanna make sure they're safe for your aquarium, watch that video. When it came to the wood, this is actually a combination of Malaysian bogwood as well as some manzanita. The manzanita are the couple little smaller branches, but you'll notice one thing uh, between them. The wood is mostly smooth and rounded. Discus can scatter in the light uh, or if you walk by or something, you know, it doesn't take very much at times and they could just scatter all around depending on how secure they fill in the tank. And you don't want them to hurt themselves on the wood. So all smooth wood. I also want to use a combination of manzanita as well as Malaysian uh, bogwood. The bogwood simply releases tannins and gives us a more darker look to the tank. But to finish off with it looking a little more natural, I added in a couple hundred miniature uh, Indian almond leaves or catapa leaves. These are going to give it a more natural look, but they're also going to release some tannins in the water and also provide with some natural antifungal properties. So when the discus do lay eggs, if they don't fertilize them all, at least the ones that uh, are not fertilized are not going to rot and potentially in infect any others. Lighting on this is going to be incredibly simple. Just a couple of shop lights, LED shop lights. They're low in wattage. It's just enough to see the fish. Uh, and when it comes to breeding discus, a lot of the times, if you're finding you're having too much light 
we could simply just kind of turn one off and boom, uh, they can feel a little bit more secure that way. With that said, we do not want total darkness. A lot of the times in my breeding disc is passed, I wouldn't even have lights over the top. I would just use ambient light. And in the middle of the night, I would of course have a night light and or some sort of a lamp on close by so the fry can still find their parents. The dimly lit tank also eliminates uh, chances of you know, algae or anything like that, because for the most part, we want to be hands off with this tank. We don't want to have to continuously be cleaning it or anything like that. Kind of want it to be self-sustaining. So what do we do for filtration? Well, in a discus breeding tank, low flow is going to be key. Uh, if you want to use some sort of, it doesn't really matter if you want to use sponge filter, hang on the back, a, a, a sump, uh, a canister. I've shown you guys how to build all of those and bread discus doing so. You know, these uh, built-in, uh, sumps that are in the 180s. I built that for a discus breeding tank and I bred them in that, but I also did it with sumps. I also did it with sponge filters. It doesn't really matter so long as it's sized properly and the flow is lower uh, than your typical aquarium. Shooting for a turnover rate of about two to four times an hour. So on a hundred gallon tank, for example, you're only gonna need a filter that's doing two to 400 gallons per hour. And that's just based off my experience and success that I've had. I also want to talk about like long-term goals for this. What are my long-term goals? I'm just going to put in a pair of discus uh, and that's it. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to take the fry out eventually, wean them off the parents and grow them out somewhere else and sell them. I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to have a, a parent, uh, a couple of parents and see what happens long-term. Do they continue to breed with the babies in there? Do they, if they, Obviously, if they go after the babies and see them as a threat, I'll intervene and, you know, and kind of obviously remove them. Well, I'm not looking into getting into selling discus or anything like that, but I do want to, you know, have an opportunity to try a natural discus tank or at least semi-natural to see what happens. Now, of course, I know what's going to be said. What about plants? Wouldn't plants be natural? Kind of, sort of. I mean, in the wild, discus are typically found in very murky, very muddy waters with uh, some wood and that sort of thing, but they're not typically, we could have done like a beautifully planted aquarium. And in my opinion, if you're going to add discus to an aquarium, a planted tank is one of the worst things you could do. And they typically don't work out long-term. A planted aquarium that's typically high tech is so focused on CO2 uh, and nutrients it's, and none of this benefits the fish and the discus t health tends to drop more and more. The focus here is on the fish. If I'm looking to add in plants, then I got to worry about lights and nutrient levels, CO2 potentially, and a number of other things. This is all I believe that I need. If you want to do something like this and, you know, add your plants in, go for it. But in my opinion, the less that you have to, the less focus you take off the fish and the more work you put into other things and, you know, concerns of lighting and plants and nutrients and CO2, the less success you're likely going to have. There are concerns that I have when it comes to this tank. Typically speaking, when I'm breeding discus, I do it in a 20 to 30 gallon tank. Yes, you know, four to six inch discus, a pair do wonderfully in a 20 to 30 gallon tank uh, to breed them in. Uh, it offers sense, a sense of security. You know, you kind of paint all the sides and whatnot. And that is not the case with this. None of the sides are painted. It is a 180 gallon aquarium. So I'm a little worried of having, seeing what happens there, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay. Anyways, with this tank set up, the next video you're likely going to see is me going to the fish store, picking up the fish, uh, doing a tour of that store. You'll get to meet that, the owner and whatnot. I think you're really gonna enjoy that store. And of course, if we are able to secure the discus that are not for sale, uh, we've already kind of talked this. I wouldn't have done this if I didn't know I was going to be able to get them, but, um, so cats out of the bag, I'm allowed to buy them. <laughs> so when we get them home, and, and then of course, one of the next videos after that is of course, getting them home, acclimating them, get them in the tank, and then really talk about their necessities, the parameters of the water, diet, uh, and other needs that you guys probably are curious and wondering about that. Uh, I used to talk about for years and years on this channel when I was breeding discus, and you know, I haven't really had the opportunity to do it anymore. But the things that you're going to learn from that video, you can apply to the remainder of your hobby. And I can assure you, you're going to have just as much success as I do. Anyways, hope you've enjoyed this video and as excited as I am to begin this journey of a naturally set up uh, or a natural 
breeding discus tank. I'm not sure if, what, what I'm going to call it, but as I am, but uh, I think you guys are. If you're not subscribed to this channel yet though, and this is something you want to see, make sure you are. If you're not already, I'll see you guys in the next video.